Hello, it's me Austin, and if you're new to my channel, I am a designer with a passion for fashion and world of art. This is the second episode of my regalia series. Last episode, I showed you guys how I made the royal sword that is a part of my royal king costume. In today's episode, I will show you how I made that shiny fancy looking orb that is often seen held in the hands of British kings and queens in various coronation portraits. On May 6, 2023, the world witnessed the first British coronation in 70 years. Among the many jewels, robes and crowns worn by King Charles III and Queen Camilla for this ancient ceremony at Westminster Abbey, the king could also be seen holding the sovereign's orb, which symbolizes the power of the monarch. While making props is usually not my forte, I just figured it would be so fun to make something that would complete my regalia ensemble. And you know, just something really cool to hold in my hand to really bring me into character, you know? First thing first, get yourself a plastic ball. You can find this at many craft and party supply stores. I will have to paint it gold. Ignore the spray painting part completely because I later returned to the orb almost two years later and I applied gold leaves on the orb which looks miles better than spray paint. I will get into more detail at the end. The nib right here is for hanging the ball, but we don't need that so I cut it off with a Dremel. And then I smooth the burr with a sanding bit. While the sphere is still in two halves, it's a good time to mark the pole of the upper half. This will be where we mount the cross. With the Dremel attached to the smallest drill bit, I drew a small hole into that pole, which I believe is called a pilot hole. And then I made the hole larger enough to fit a screw using a thicker drill bit. You might be thinking, it seems weird that the monarch of a modern nation would hold a large shiny gold ball as part of their coronation ceremony. According to the Royal Collection website, the orb is a representation of the sovereign's power. That shiny gold ball itself symbolizes the globe, the cross mounting the globe to symbolize the Christian world. The orb is divided into three segments by the jewel bands to represent the three continents known to medieval Europe. And the Brits aren't the only folks to have a gold shiny ball as part of their regalia. Bavaria, Sweden, Norway, the Netherlands, Hungary, Bohemia, and Poland also have their own orb too, in very similar fashion. This orb is often needed for official occasions such as a coronation, the state opening of parliament, or a royal funeral. Outside of this occasion, the orb and the rest of the crown jewels are always on display at the Tower of London. So go see them if you just happen to be in London. Now this step is entirely optional. I stuffed the bottom hemisphere with clay, a heavy barbell nut, and some horcruxes. This makes the orb behave like a rolly party doll, which stays upright and in one place. Instead of rolling around like Mary Queen of Scots's head, it also gives a hefty weight to the orb if you're into experiencing what it would feel like to hold a sovereign's orb. Now for this stone that surmounts the cross, at the time, I didn't know where to get my hands on a gemstone like this. That was two years ago. Now I do. Anyway, there was this resin cube lying around on my bookshelves, which actually belonged to this keychain my friend gave me as a gift. And I thought to myself, this would do. Now making the setting that frames the stone, which also connects the cross to the sphere. I used 10 gauge aluminium wire in gold tone for this. I bent the wire in multiple sections following the contour of the stone from the bottom over the top and back to the bottom and cut it with flush cutters. Now I'm chasing the middle section of the wire on a bench block to flatten it out. This extends the area of the wire so I can put a screw through and mount it on top of the sphere later. Then I also chase the two ends of the wire which will be where we mount the cross on. And you can really tell the wire is not real gold, as after we hit the hell out of this wire, the bare aluminium shows through, and the imposter hitting away. Sounds just like my ex. Now I wrap this modified wire back around the stone. Mm -hmm. 
and again with the Dremel, I drilled a screw hole in the top section at the bottom section. I also smoothed the burr with a sanding bit. Oh, and I take another piece of 10 gauge wire and modify it in the same way, but without the two flat ends. This will cross the other wire at a 90 degree angle. Now I can fasten this element on the pole that I've marked earlier with a Phillips head screw and a hex nut. I made this all back in 2021 before every other object in this Regalia series. As I'm watching the footage, I realized there's a lot of things I could do better, such as a different type of material or a different technique. So I'm thinking about giving this orb a redo, so you might see a video on that in the future. Hopefully I won't let the footage just sit around in my hard drive for another two years. With the frame ready, I can put the two hemispheres together. And of course, this painting part is irrelevant now, but I did spend a lot of time spray painting this at night. I particularly didn't enjoy the film at all. So, God save foil gilding and God save hole. Oh, look at the way it wobbles. Now, another history lesson. The current sovereign's orb dates back to 1661. It is a recreation of another orb used in earlier coronations. That orb, along with the crown's scepters and many jewelries, was melted down and made into coins after the execution of Charles I in 1649 and the following abolishment of the English monarchy. When his son, Charles II, was restored as king, a new regalia was needed for his coronation. And so this orb, along with the iconic St. Edward's crown, was crafted. Now I move on to making the top cross. I use this template that I made in advance. You can download this over at my Patreon shop, and it is free for all Patreon members. I cut out the cross from this sheet of brass with a hacksaw. It was quite an arm workout. Time to make the band that goes around the equator at the top of the orb. Again, I use sheet brass, but this time it's much thinner. This sheet is only 26 gauge, so you can easily cut it with metal shears instead of the cross earlier where I had to use the hacksaw. After cutting out the band, I flattened it with a rubber mallet, then I curved the band around a cylinder to form a ring. I cut out another band to form the top arch. Cut it in half and then cut out a half circle at the end of each half, which will form a hole when the two are put together. I figure it would be easier to glue the gemstone on while the band is still flat, so I decurve the band. I need to mark out the position of each gemstone, which means we have to do a little bit of math. To save everyone from a confusing explanation, I have prepared this diagram so you can see exactly how you should divide your band. Now comes the fun part. It's the jewel time. Look at all these stones and beads. I think this is the most material that I've ever got at once. The majority of these stones are going to the making of the St. Edward's crown. So that's going to be very exciting. On the screen right now is the complete breakdown of material used for this orb. You can use this spreadsheet for reference. For the rows of pearls, I use string glass pearls. I tied the end of the cord into a chunky knot and sealed it with super glue to keep the pearls from falling off the string, which would not be a fun day at all. Then it's just a simple matter of binding the pearls on top of the band with E6000 glue. And of course, as always, I always remind my viewers to only press the stones on once the glue has set for a few minutes and becomes tacky. And then it's turn for these colorful rectangular gemstones. Suddenly, I'm craving fox heart candy.
I also cut up a rhinestone chain into 22 segments of exactly 18 stone long. Each segment will be the rhinestone border around the gemstones. The real orb, according to the Royal Collection Trust, was made out of solid gold and decorated with clusters of emeralds, rubies, and sapphires, surrounded by rose-cut diamonds, each in a chamfered enamel mount between single rows of pearls. On top of a large step-cut amethyst sits a diamond-studded cross with a central sapphire on one side and a central emerald on the other. Now that the band has been bejeweled, when I walk in the room, I can still make the whole place shimmer. Once again, curve it into a ring and affix it onto the equator of the orb with a lot of E6000 glue. To keep the whole thing in place while the glue set, I wrap it up with plastic foam very aggressively. And now is a good time to go to bed. Good night. And it's the following day and the whole thing has set overnight. So I can now attach top arch to the orb. For the cross, I use these golden headpins as anchors to fit the pearls onto each corner of the cross and on each cross's arm. This huge as pearl is my favorite goes right on top of the cross. And now I just cover up the bare wires by gluing on more glass rhinestones and prong settings in the same pattern as the real thing. And the last thing to do is fixing the cross on our wire element with a single screw. And as mentioned earlier, I later returned to this orb to give it a gold leaf makeover. First, use a brush to apply a thin coat of gilding adhesive onto the object. Then you need to let the adhesive set for at least 30 minutes until it turns clear and tacky. After that, you can now apply the gold leaves. Careful though, because each leaf is very light and delicate. Even a strong exhale can blow it away to pieces. As long as your item is all covered, it doesn't matter how you put the leaves on. Now this is the fun but very messy part. Use a brush to burnish and remove the excess foil. Keep doing this until the surface is reflective and there is no flakes left on the surface of the object. Although this is a fun process, I have to warn you though, after doing gilding, your entire room would be littered with flakes of gold and silver everywhere. No matter how tidy you work, it's the same as those pesky glitters. You'll be finding bits of them everywhere for the next few months. And that looks so much better than the spray paint. It's so much more reflective and luscious. Mm.